Our next guest was arrested <laughs> in Sydney on Monday night. Arrested. Why would he be arrested in Sydney on a Monday night? What had he been doing wrong? Well, he'd been holding an Israeli flag near a memorial to commemorate the appalling murder, rape, mutilation and deaths of Israeli women, babies and civilians in uh, the Negev desert. For that, he was arrested. Oh, yes, there was a massive, aggressive pro-Palestinian rally just nearby. Have a look. What's he been arrested for? I've done nothing wrong. Tell us what he's being arrested for. What have I done? Just tell me what I've done. Stop. 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 Why is So Mike Spiro joins us in the studio. Mark, uh, terrific arrest there. Wanted to show the grandkids. Um, so tell us, you were holding your Israeli flag. You were going down to the Opera House to commemorate. I mean, we laugh, but it, you were commemorating a very serious event, a horrific event, yet you were arrested. What happened? Yeah, I think everyone knows what happened. Um, to this day, I was the only one arrested uh, for uh, on the Monday evening, not 36 hours after what was the biggest massacre that the Jewish people have faced since Nazi Europe. And yet, I was the only one arrested. Um, I can't get those images out of my head of somewhat a couple of hours after my arrest where these same people were burning the Israeli flag, uh, were chanting, as we all know, gas the Jews, F the Jews. And you have this image of tens of our New South Wales police force on the steps of the Opera House, just watching and allowing racial incitement to take place at one of the most iconic buildings in the world. And, and, and one of, at one of the iconic buildings, on, on the night where it was lit up in, in the colours of the Israeli flag to a, a moment for the community to, to pay respects to, to those who had fallen, there were no Jews there. Jews were told to stay away from our most iconic landmark. Yes. Um, I think people need to appreciate that words have meaning. And any student of history will, will know that chants like we heard on the Monday evening have no place anywhere. I, I find it absolutely shameful. And I can tell you there is a community in this country that is, is really hurt by what was, what was said. It, it's actually very, very... It's been a very confronting week. James. And, Mark, I mean... I want to go through what actually happened when you were detained by the police. You told me when we've spoken before that the police said that they were doing this for their safety because they didn't want a confrontation. What does this tell you about a police force and a police minister who's behind all of this, who's giving orders not to enforce the law? Because down at the Opera House, they were setting off flares, which is also against the law. No arrests were made for that but that instead is about preventing physical conflict. Are you worried that under this government, and especially this police minister, thugs with the force of numbers are able to defy the police and the police won't do anything because, well, safety? Absolutely. I think we all should be worried. If our own police force is worried about their own safety and has to use me, an innocent bystander, with a rolled-up flag and as an example of that, and I don't know if you've seen other, other people that were... I'd, I'd say we're not pro-anything. We're anti a terrorist organisation that, not 36 hours before, has brutally ma massacred hundreds, thousands of people. I mean, let's put some numbers around that for a second, right? That we're talking about the equivalency on a per capita basis of 70,000 Americans. Mm. Mm. Our own police force are afraid. Our own police minister refers to the Jewish community as your people in her instruction or... Seriously. ..in her advice not to go into the city. What's, well, the, what's the emotion amongst... Jew I mean, obviously, you can't speak for, for all Jews in Australia, but what, from your friends and community and others, what's the emotion at the moment? One of fear. I was out... I was, I was with some friends last night um, hosting some other people that unfortunately, have to go and, and protect Israel um, and are waiting for flights. 
and we're thinking about where we can go out in Sydney that is safe. Yeah. And you would have seen that video uh, that went around of some Jewish teenagers with an Israeli flag who were being confronted. I mean, and yet it feels to me like the government is almost sort of saying, well, don't show yourself. This seems to me uh, greatly you know, that, that, and that somehow they're the ones who are causing the trouble. What do you say to that? I've also seen images of, of pro-Nazis walking through Flinders Street Station in Melbourne with masks and chanting Hail Hitler and asking if people are Jewish. Mm. Happened a few days ago. Yeah. I've seen synagogues yesterday have to go into lockdown for periods of time because there are concerns that there's a potential gunman on the loose in the eastern suburbs. Really? Well, that's a nat what? natural extension. If, if you're, you with a flag is going to be uh, not acceptable, it's going to rile up people, then what if you've got a Star of David or if you've got a skull cap? Is that going to be the next thing, that you're going to have to hide your Jewishness in public, otherwise you're going to incite people? I mean, it's, that's it, it, a it, scary it. thought. And we know in France uh, a lot of the, the, the Jews who left France said they were forced to do that. They had to hide their Jewishness because it, it was so hostile. We keep hearing from even the left that never again. Mm. And yet we see what happened 80 years ago happening again. Mm. The Jewish children are afraid to wear the items that you've just referred to. Mm. In fact, I'm, I'm highly encouraged by the thousands of people since the incident on Monday evening that have come out and said... They've inst they, I've instilled more pride in them, right? Well, you made, the cover, you made the cover of The Spectator Australia this week, so uh, there's a cartoon there and it says you're saying to the police, what is my crime? And the police are saying, you're Jewish. And that's the reality. That's what it's come to, that uh, yep. it's a crime to be Jewish in this country. What has, been, what has been in the last couple of days? Have you had any kind of official response, apologies to you directly? And also, there's a demonstration today. What do you make of that? What's your advice yeah. for that? So, firstly, there's been no apology. And there's been um, invitations to apologise to me personally in Parliament on Thursday, which Police Minister Catley refused over and over again. Um, and as for my response uh, to your last question around what, what potentially might happen today, the fact that a thousand police funded by the taxpayer have to stand and protect the citizens of New South Wales today from something that might get out of hand is unfathomable. But what are they, what are they standing for? Because, well, precisely, because... they're standing for the murder of Jews in... The, near the Gaza Strip. That's what they're standing for. They're, so they're saying we support the appalling atrocities that we saw. That's what they appear to be supporting. We are giving and that people... Is, Hamas is no different to ISIS. They are supporting the beheading of babies. They are supporting the most appalling uh, rape and torture, mutilation of women, children. That's what they're supporting if they are standing there and, and criticising Israel at this point in time. You cannot de-link the two things. There's no moral equivalency. Mark, what does it say to you that, um, you know, you have to have police standing uh, to protect, you know, the, the, you, on one, one direction when you've got the people who are protesting essentially in support of Hamas, and then the other night there was a big, big um, so show of support in the eastern suburbs, in Dover Heights, I believe, and yet the police had to protect them from other demonstrators, that there had to be so much security. I mean, that just sort of says it all. And what do you think now needs to happen with the state government? Certainly Yasmin Catley has to go, I presume, the police minister, but are you satisfied with the way Chris Minns, the premier in New South Wales, has handled this issue? Look, um, I'll answer the first question first. I think the police minister absolutely has to resign from her position based on what we saw on Monday evening. There were laws that were broken. There's anti-incitement laws, there's, there's defamation laws, there's ra anti-racism laws, there's anti-Nazi laws. Mm. Anti-flare laws. Anti-flare flare laws that I'm not familiar with, but I'll, I'll take your well, you, word. Well, you're not allowed to set off flares right. in the middle of the city. Yeah. We put people away... Let's take a, another step back. We put people in this country away for child abuse, for rape, and yet we are giving people a stage to celebrate those very acts. It doesn't make sense. Mm. Right? As to your next question, 
Um, and you mentioned Wednesday night solidarity rally. You can compare and contrast, if, if you will, I'll leave that to the public, how the Jewish community conducted themselves on Wednesday in a very dignified way, mourning and showing empathy to the atrocities that took place. Um, we don't... It, it, is, it is, you know, in terms of Premier Min's, I think he actually has come a long way. You know, I, I, will, I will say this, that he has apologised, uh, in, in, you know, to, to the Jewish community. Uh, he spoke particularly well on the Wednesday evening, I found. Um, and the next step that he could, you know, take to really show that he is taking this seriously is to have a good hard look at his police minister mm -hmm. in his cabinet. Mike Spiro, thanks so much for coming on outside. I hope you. to see you uh, with your flag somewhere around town at some point without being arrested. If I'm allowed. <laughs>